Greetings from Snake Mountain Boatworks on Wednesday, July 6, 2022. Yes, we have a new preservation project in the shop. And she is a 1947 Higgins Sports Speedster. The only problem is she doesn't look quite like this right now. But remember this introduction because in not too many months what you see here on the screen and I'll pan it around you will also see right here in our shop. This Higgins has been in the South ever since she left the factory in New Orleans in 1947. She retains much of her Higgins heritage, but unfortunately, here again, we will be enjoying the challenge now remember back to that intro, this is how she arrived. She's been redecked, and I guess somebody thought that nailing this plywood to the frames using uh, flathead copper ring shank nails was cool. Uh, it's just not cool. This is all supposed to be fire engine red up here. The interior is ribbon-cut mahogany. Now, I doubt that it was ribbon-cut mahogany originally, but uh, it's really well done, nicely varnished, in great shape. So we will save what is actually here on the interior, but install a correct set of upholstery, which is white framed seating with bright red medallions on each side of center in both the seat backs and the seats themselves. Um, whoever worked on her took off her racing stripes her badge of honor and courage, put the registration numbers in the wrong place. The uh, side of the boat, which is all, this entire boat's plywood. It is only plywood. Um, and her hull sides appear to be in really good shape. We will take all of the trim off, of course, and sand them flat and then bring them back and add the fire engine red racing stripes that emblazon each side and define the hull. The real challenge here is below the waterline. Partly it's because of this trailer. Once again, an unwitting owner was taken to uh, task unknowingly by a bad trailer. You see, this, this boat has no support ahead of way back there. This bottom is a single layer of quarter inch plywood and what we can see, I hope we can see right here, it's all broken out. The whole bottom is just basically broken up and cracked. So our first task after we remove the engine and her innards, if you will, 
is to uh, remove this bottom. And it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because of the way Higgins designed and then manufactured um, this piece of plywood that comes down the side uh, meets the piece of plywood that is comprising this section of the bottom in sort of a butt joint. So we will repeat that. Uh, she arrived, believe it or not, without a, a fuel bung or gas cap. Um, and then we come to the engine, which has been sitting for some time. It's a, it's a Chrysler uh, Ace, really good engine. The Aces and the Crowns were just great, great engines. Tough, reliable. However, there's a reason why they have impellers and water pumps. And that reason is to keep the engine from self-destructing. Well, evidently, this engine, prior to this owner's purchase of it and the boat, was run with a failed impeller. Right now, it's seized right up tight, and it's seized partly because it was allowed to get so hot that it blew a hole through two of the uh, cylinder walls. So we're talking a new head, excuse me, a new block. And my guess is the pistons will be toast. I wouldn't be surprised if we find some bent rods, uh, some damage valves. But Robert Henkel, in Marine City, Michigan, has already been apprised of the situation. He groaned, of course, but uh, uh, Robert can make this happen. Paint it back in proper Chrysler Marine engine colors. And then the other interesting thing that we haven't quite sorted out yet, there are two wiring harnesses in here. And one part of the wiring harness, the more recent one, and the one that appeared to be hooked up, is comprised primarily of speaker wire rather than proper marine, well-insulated uh, wire. This wire is just, well, it's junk. And so we will remove both wiring harnesses and by the time she returns to Georgia she will have uh, one solid safe wiring harness. The Higgins really had a sense of a whimsy. Uh, I love the foot feed and when she leaves here, all those grooves are supposed to be fire engine red and they will be again. She has the correct gauge panel. We don't know at this point whether any of it works, but we'll find out once we have a, a, an engine back or at least can put some current to the, the non-mechanical. What? Her... Hardware is correct, except that on the Sports Speedster, the step pads should be white. Uh, I found a set of new old stock white step pads that will replace these black ones when she returns. And then there was one other challenge that we face, and we can't quite get down to it. But that's the engine box sitting under there. And see that thing hanging off the back? Believe it or not, somebody cobbled a uh, built blower way up high. The hose for it was way up high. And 
uh, as far as I can tell, it did nothing because gasoline vapors are heavier than air and they drop to the bottom. So we'll sort all this out. She's, it's going to be in a really exciting, fun project. And when we're finished, uh, we will have strengthened the bottom with additional framing. There's almost none down there. We will do a modified 5200 bottom using two layers of plywood. And uh, this carpeted floor will be a return to what was original, which was a, a very light marbleized uh, marmoleum. Uh, we've got a, a pretty good stock of it in our inventory here. She's going to be beautiful. And with that ace sitting in this little 17-foot boat, I, my guess is she's also going to hammer the water and bring a smile to her owners that goes from ear to ear. So with that, we'll finish this update. Well, I guess not update, introduction of our 1947 17-foot Higgins Speed, uh, excuse me, Higgins Sport Speedster. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boat Works.